Hello everybody, how you guys all doing tonight? My name is KG Prestige and welcome everybody back again for another exciting edition of the Pokepod World Podcast. Once again, my name is KG and I hope you guys are going to be having an amazing session for tonight because today we are finally going to be taking the opportunity to talk about the latest episode. That's right, after many weeks of being away from the PM 2019 anime series, we are returning with brand new content for the show. We recently got our chance to watch the newest episode of Pocket Monsters 2019, otherwise known as Pokemon Journeys, here in the U.S., And we're going to be taking a chance to talk about our initial thoughts on that episode, as well as taking a chance to talk about the latest trailer that we've received for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. It is going to be an exciting session. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. And man, am I excited to see just what kind of shenanigans we're going to get ourselves into for tonight. I have some opinions to say about this episode. I'm really curious to hear what the others have to say as well. And uh, we will get to that momentarily. Uh, For now, I'm just trying to make sure everything is running A-OK all smoothly. You guys can hear me loud and clear. Uh, Just to clarify real quick, uh, regarding the song stuff that you heard at the beginning... Uh, we have this Pokemon Lo-Fi music playing in the background. Yeah, this is done by Glitch X City. I'm pretty confident many of you have already heard about this content creator. And uh, it's going to be uh, the Pokemon Lo-Fi music one hour mix that they've made on YouTube. So I used one of the songs that they had there, which was based on the National Park from the Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver game. So first of all, that song is great. The remix of it, though. Mm, I'm going to be using that a little bit more often, man. <laughs> so that's great. I also decided to try something a little different for once. I or I, I did this before. I don't know why I stopped, but I did this before. Uh, we also uploaded the video live as well onto um, YouTube to see if people will be notified when we are live here on Twitch. Hopefully it will work. Um, And if it does, then that's great. I always love seeing more people from the community that are from other platforms also come here to watch us live and just chat with us live as well as chat with the community, man. So yeah, let's see if these kind of things work. But once again, folks, I hope you guys are looking forward to tonight's session. It is going to be a fun one for sure, so I hope you guys stick around throughout the night. Now, I'm going to go and hop into the call with my pals. We're going to go and see how things go, and uh, hopefully, yeah, nothing goes wrong. Fingers crossed. (laughs) Let me go and hop into it with the boys. Hello. Evening. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. Glad to hear, man. Here I am just trying to drink me some water because I need it now. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, you need to get yourself well hydrated. Exactly. So, Stay hydrated, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so before we begin, because it's going to take about a couple of minutes for everybody to come in here. Um, originally, I was intending on doing a, a chi- one on another one of those Chinese console reviews. Um, however, I had realized that, number one, the one that I was trying to get was a clone system of the old droid uh, go droid go advance which is like a rock chip rk 3326 console but then i realized okay number one these people ripped me off for the shipping and handling they wanted to charge me fucking 30 dollars for shipping and i'm like what the fuck that was like 95 dollars so i was just randomly perusing at like four o'clock in the morning and i realized wait a minute why don't i just get a phone like an Android phone, because, you know, the the thing is, I want to play, my goal was basically get a portable device that I could play N64 and Dreamcast on. And then I find out that the there is a, there's a cheap phone called the Samsung uh, Galaxy A10e that can actually play N64 and Dreamcast at full speed. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. How much is it? Well, I went on Walmart. And I found this phone for like $54. And I'm like, holy shit, this is actually less money than those Chinese consoles. And it can actually play N64 and Dreamcast. The phone? Yeah, I, I went and bought a phone to not use it as a phone. Oh. I'm using it for as a portable game system. So you essentially bought a Game Boy. 
Well, it, it, all, it plays more than just the Game Boy, though. But technically, know, it, it know, is the Game saying. Boy shape. <laughs> and, no, yeah. not really. It's like... I mean, I mean the the A10e has a 19 by 9 aspect ratio, but I'm going to be getting that tomorrow. So next week I'm going to be making a making my official review on this cha on this channel um, for that device because you know last year I was talking about you know these Chinese handhelds, and this year I was hoping that they would clean up their act and stuff. But the problem is, the actual good the actual quote unquote good ones cost like a hundred and hundred dollars and i'm like jesus you know and it's like you can go and buy like an android phone and use that as a portable game machine you just have to get like a, a like one like either one of those um smartphone those smartphone controllers things that, that expand and you can clip it onto there and use it bluetooth or um, what I'm doing is I bought that $10 clip for my um, 8 bit do uh, SN30 Pro co uh, re remote control. So I can actually use that. I'll, I'll have it clipped on there. I'll have it on the phone and stuff like that. I also bought, I, the funny thing is I bought that clip. I bought the phone. I bought another stand. And I bought a USB Type-C uh, type on-the-go dongle. And that costed me less than how much I would have paid for this, for that Chinese console with DHL shipping. Mm. So yeah, so that's so that's what's going to be coming up. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts. Should you buy a fifty dollar Android phone or seventy dollar Android phone and use that to play some of the retro games instead of trying to buy these Chinese handhelds from between forty and and a hundred dollars? So that's that's what it is um oh yeah the vita the vita is really good for emulation too and it's you dead <laughs> yeah well, the vita died the minute it was made sadly well here it did not in japan japan you buy plenty of games for it like you, you'll be surprised how many games oh no there. here in the u.s as well it's also not to the extent like how it is in japan but yeah, right. they they still exist. It's it's more of a JRPG machine than I mean, anything else. Even, even if you could buy a bunch of games on it, I think unfortunately the Vita just came at a weird time. So even if when the 3DS came, like, dominated, I guess yeah, it was basically was the say, beta switch before it even became the switch because it yeah, technically no, did the whole like, console thing. It just thing. came at a time where nobody gave enough of a shit, so it just died. Well, and also what what uh, what sh what really. Uh, drove sony the reason why the vita died was because you had to buy a proprietary sd card and that costs like eight times more expensive than an actual sd card now there now the, the the fucked up thing is that they are they do there does exist mm -hmm. um sd to vita adapters but they do not work on the game slot mm -hmm. so you can't technically download games onto them it only works via homebrew mm -hmm. which is stupid so that means that you have to buy that means that if you wanted a 32 gig memory card that's going to cost you like 45 bucks and that's mm. and, and that's stupid because you could buy you could buy like a you could buy a 32 gig card now for like nine dollars but of course you know it's because sony is sony they even did this with the freaking uh, the memory stick back in the psp days memory mm. stick duo although that later got cracked and then you were able to get um ps uh, the s uh, micro sd to, to uh, micro yeah, memory stick duos but yeah, yeah the also uh the... thank you guys so much for all the follows we're starting to get a couple of follows here on the chat yeah. uh jail 10 br uh, and Tariq. I'm, I, I'm sorry if i mispronounced them thank you guys so much for the follows uh continue on buddy but yeah but yeah, I would say I will give my full thoughts next week and how and uh, what I would think to to those people that are thinking about getting one of those handhelds and um, you know and just and just get like an Android phone and not use it as a phone, which is kind of funny. You know, you buy a phone and you don't use it as a phone. But that's that's what I think. I think uh, I think it will be pretty cool and pretty sad at the same time. Because you think how you know how much overhead these Chinese manufacturers make, and then you mm -hmm. just get a smartphone, 
and you combine you you pair that up with like maybe a twenty or thirty dollar, either like a smartphone clip that with the controller on the sides or whatever, and you have a better gaming experience than those, either those MIPS, um, Chinese handhelds or the Rock Chip Chinese handhelds. Neo Geo Pocket. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to play some, uh, what is it, some Fatal Fury, you go for that. Then yes. Well, I mean, Neo Geo Pocket, but I, I'm, I think I think he's talking about like the original system, which is fine. The Neo Geo Pocket Color, I think it's cool for a collector standpoint. But we live in the modern age where we have backlit LCD screens. We have technology, thankfully. We're not cavemen. We yeah, are... yeah, because because we got to do that. Yeah, turf golf tournament. No, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do that, then. Like I said, you buy, you buy the you buy the Android phones and you freaking buy you just play it like that. Oh lord! Oh, the, oh god, the Sega game. Tyrone, I know you're game. you're a Sega aficionado. I would like to think. Are you? I'm a Sonic aficionado. Oh, you're not a Sega. I mean, I like Bayonetta too. I guess so. That's Sega. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Bayonetta Sega. I thought that was platinum. No, no I'm, Sega's I'm, the one that like distributes it or something like that. Yeah. But the ones who make the games are platinum. Publisher. Yeah, platinum's the ones yeah, that. I mean, I'm mostly just a Sonic aficionado. What's up? Yeah. Uh, did you hear about that Sega Game Gear Micro? Yeah, we talked about it. I believe on a separate discussion. Yeah, we never actually talked about it in the uh, here. In the here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, is called Pokepod. Yes, but in the here, we've never in talked the about the in the middle of the night. The Sega yeah. Game Gear Micro, which is basically think of like the Nintendo Game Boy Advance Micro, if you recall that machine. Mm-hmm. But Except it's smaller than that. It, it, yeah, it's even more smaller, and it also comes to the extent of only having four games in it. Just four. What's the point? See, I knew this was going to happen the minute that uh, the NES made their classic. It's like everybody wants to jump in on the micro classic. Look at the old thing we have that's now small and is a portable thing. Like, I knew that was going to happen the minute... We saw that because it's like everybody wants to jump on this whole like, let's remake a, let's remake something for the sake of people remembering what it was thing, and it's it's not working out for this one because what the hell are you gonna do with four games? Well, it's not only that. What the fuck are you gonna do with a one point five inch fucking screen? Yeah, you gotta have like <laughs> you, you know those glasses that they use in Spy Kids that that shit that yeah. zooms all the way in. Well, apparently, yeah. if you buy if you buy that's what the I need four pack. You get a freaking magnifier. I'm like, see, they are, they are doing that shit. <laughs> but like, it's my like question you get, is, you get 16, 16 fucking games for like two hundred dollars. That's the thing, two hundred dollars for four game, not Game Boys, four Sega Game Gear, uh, what, whatever the thing Micros. is called. Game yeah, the, the, the micro shenanigans. Uh huh. For two, for four things, you get. Two hundred dollars worth total. Like to me, I don't understand that. Mm. Why is it so expensive for something that's so I think, small? I think it's a novelty item at this point. I don't even think the people who are buying these are playing the games themselves. I think they're just keeping them as novelty items. You know, yeah. I, like uh, most people. Like I remember the Game Boy Micro, uh, for example. It, it 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 looked like it, like it was it's clearly a Game Boy you could play stuff on it but most people just kept it on their keychain like as a look yeah uh-huh. but at least yeah but at least you could play all the damn Game Boy Advance games on it yeah you could but it was mostly served as like a uh-huh. like like you would just buy a Game Boy Advance rather than do that because it was so damn small and inconvenient yeah but the, yeah but the sad part the sad part is the Game Boy Micro is actually better than the Game Boy Advance SP because as a fucking headphone jack. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah that that that's it, it, it. We all can't be perfect. That's just I'm just saying. I mostly just saw them on people's keychains. I never really seen anyone actually like sit down and play it. Like it's because the buttons are so damn small, so comically small. Yeah, and the, the to think about how this is even smaller than like the micro. I can just imagine the amount of rage I'm about to have when I'm just yeah. trying to push the down, and I wound up hitting all four buttons at all once. All four buttons I, at once, right? 
And I'm like, how? first of all, how did I do that? And secondly, why is this thing the way it's designed? And yes, I understand it's supposed to not be like a novelty item and whatnot, but still, come on. $200 for four little pipsqueak thingies? Really? Right. Also, hey, Richie. So, so What's up, ad- Richie? Apparently, we have an ad break now. Yeah, I saw it was Snickers on my... This stream is brought to you by Snickers, guys. Snickers, taste the rainbow or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> sneak a sneak. Snickers, the, the snack that Snickers back or whatever. I don't know their fucking slogan. <laughs> yeah, I got a Geico commercial. You lucky. Oh, uh, Geico. Geico where the pets go well, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> well, comparing, well, for the folks that are back, comparing it to the other minis, um, this by far is the worst. Yes. I agree with that. Like because I'm okay. gonna be honest, they, they, they didn't even have game they didn't even have really any like that good of games for this to begin with. Like their selection was probably very like blah anyway. I can only think of like a small handful of games they could have picked for this. What are the four games? Well, no, no, there's four there's four consoles, but they have four games each, so six total of sixteen games. Yeah, there's okay, so, are, basically the are, entire game gear collection. What uh, no. <laughs> well of course game I'm just gear. kidding. Game Gear Collection is like 900. 900? Well, then, like, the fact that KG made the joke means that it, it roots from the fact that there aren't that many games that were that good on it. Here we go. I got it. I got the list right here for you. Uh, we have Shining Force. Uh, okay, here we go. Actually, there are four models. I'm going to tell you all the different models that it has. Uh, okay. The black model comes with Sonic the Hedgehog, Puyo uh, Puyo 2, Outrun, uh, and Royal Stone. The mm. blue one comes with Sonic Chaos, mm. Gunstar Heroes, Sol- mm. Sylvan Tail, and Baku Baku Animal. The mm. yellow micro has Shining Force Gaiden, Ensei Jashin no Kunihe, Shining Force The Sword of Hajia, Shining Force Gaiden Final Conflict, and then Nazopuyo Aruru no Ru. I think that's how it's titled but anyway the red version though comes with revelations the demon slayer megami tensei gaiden last bible special the gg shinobi and columns Mm -hmm. now the hardware itself is 80 millimeters by 43 millimeters by 20 millimeter with a 1.15 inch display there's a single mono speaker and a headphone jack and it charges over usb but it can also run off two triple a batteries see and the fact that tss was like they have a bunch of games that that makes it more if anything that that worsens its case that means they could have put more games on here and they just made the choice not not to to. well i guess maybe because the well the components that they're working with i guess they didn't have enough flash memory then Uh, why even do this thing in the first place if you weren't because you gotta get playing to nostalgia exactly that's the and that i mean you you just stated what the problem is yeah i mean i mean that's what it is uh the game, yeah, the, the Genesis Mini, I think, is the best out of the bunch. Well, actually, it's a tie between the Super Nintendo one and the and the and the, uh, the, the the Genesis Mini, because the Turbo Graphics Mini or the PC Engine Mini actually sucks because it's actually proven <laughs> that there's no, it's actually proven that there's actually four to six frames of lag, uh-huh. audio of audio of of I think there's like three frames of input lag and then there's like four to six frames of audio lag depending on what uh what you talk to now and, uh, i just want to kind of sucks with that go ahead i, I want to just continue to add on a little bit about this because i'm reading this more here in the in the verge website uh you may be wondering how exactly you're meant to play games on a 1.15 inch display which makes the game boy micros two inch panel sound huge by comparison well if you're willing to drop a total of 27,255 n no. Roughly going up to two hundred and fifty dollars no. on a pack of all four consoles, as TSS stated, Sega is including a mini version of its big window magnifying glass accessory, which is shown off on screen right now. Now, this no. is the same company that released the non-functional plastic Sega CD and 32X add-ons for the Mega Drive Mini. So I 
don't know what that's supposed to refer to, I guess. It's just for cosmetic effects. But once again, uh, each individual one is going to roughly go up to 50 bucks each and will be shipped on October 6th. And there's no word yet on a Western release. I'm pretty confident we're not going to be seeing a Western release for this. No, because our, hand, our hands are too goddamn bad. A lot of these Game Gear games I'm looking at are just shittier versions of Sega Genesis games. That's well, what it no, is, well, man. Ah, uh, no. Nope. It's shittier version. It's well, it's it's cut down versions of Sega Master System games, which is not because because the Game Gear itself was a was a cut down uh, Sega Master System. Mm -hmm. Except the only difference is the Sega Sega Game Gear actually has a start button, and the Sega Master System does not. How does this thing have something that the Master? And also, and also, Sonic One and Sonic Two are different than the Genesis counterparts. They were developed in a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for example, in the yo, second yo, yo, one, yo, Tails um, dies. Yo, yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is, uh, let's see, uh, Yuzo Koshiro actually did the, the, the music for Sonic One on the game on the uh, Master System slash Game Gear. So yeah, the guy, the guy, the guy who created the music for Streets of Rage, he did the music for Sonic One, Sega Master System slash Game Gear. Hmm. Yeah, I just I don't. I'm not, every time we talk about it, I'm not invested. Like, there's nothing they're doing that's making, that's selling me on the Moral screen. of the story, buy a fucking Mr. FPGA. That's... Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah. Nothing if, you want, if you want, if you want ultimate uh, emulation, you yeah, buy a Mr. You buy a yeah, Mr. FPGA, you spend like $200. They're, they're not selling me on this at all. Like, it's really kind of sad, actually. It's just like, this is what we've we've come down to. If you really wanna, if you really wanna celebrate, like you know, the, the Game Gear or something, there's better ways to do it. This ain't it. Like th this ain't how. You I mean, it's sad. The sad part. The sad part is you can you can buy you could buy a, a twenty a fifteen dollar Chinese handheld and play the games better. Yeah, yeah that's a problem. And I think they sell some of the Game Gear games on the Virtual Console and Nintendo 3DS. Yes. Yeah, because I got triple, I got triple trouble, trouble, Sonic Triple Trouble, or Triple Threat, or whatever the hell it's called. And I got the Tails game. Maybe that's your welcome. I barely touched that damn Tails game, but I got it. Yes. Tails High Flying Adventure, some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's then that's the biggest Tail problem. Explosion loser. <laughs> now if now. If Nintendo were to make a Game Boy Mini or whatever, Micro or whatever the fuck. Again. <laughs> uh, well, not again, because technically they haven't done this with it handheld. I would mm. love to see them. Um, they're probably not going to copy the form factor of the original brick Game Boy. I think what they're going to probably do is maybe they could do, maybe they could fit it into like a Game Boy Pocket size uh, console. Because while well, analog is doing the same thing with the analog pocket. It's about the size of uh, people who don't, who don't know. You know, analog are the FPGA people. They mm. they have they have worked with people like Kevtris, and they created such things as the analog NT, which is the uh, the NT the analog NT Mini, which play which plays uh, NES and Famicom games. The analog uh, SG, which is the uh, the Mini SG, which is the Sega, the Sega Genesis one. And the Super NT, which is the Super Nintendo one, and all those use field programmable gate arrays or FPGAs to simulate the systems, um, and they are top notch. Now they're also going to be creating the Analog Pocket, which is going to basically be a Game Boy Pocket, but but they allow you to do they allow you to put all of your uh, Game Boy it and Game Boy Advance carts, <laughs> but there's also going to be uh, add-on cartridges to that. Where you can actually play Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, Sega Game Gear, um, I think even the Atari Lynx. So they're gonna have cartridge adapters for that, and the the screen resolution is exactly ten times the resolution of the original Game Boy, sixteen hundred by one thousand, I think. Yeah, sixteen hundred by one thousand. Uh, because it was one, it was one. Because the original Game Boy, I think, is one sixty by one hundred, if I remember correctly, or sixteen hundred by twelve hundred, maybe. Mm. Um, so that's what it is. The thing is, though, that's going to cost like two hundred bucks, and they have they're going to have two FPGAs in there. One that's going to be powering the system, that's going to be doing all of the uh, simulation of the hardware, and then they're going to have another FPGA inside of it so that you can program with it. 
And then it's also, then you can also buy a dock and then dock it and play it on your TV too. So that's, that's what they're doing now for Nintendo. If they were going to make something like this, they should make it in the Game Boy Pocket form factor because I think that's some of the best ones. I mean, some people say, oh, why don't you make it the game? Yeah, I would say, po well, maybe not Pocket, but maybe Advance. But then again, though, if they're going to just put Game Boy games on it, you're not going to need the L and R. Yeah, and that's why you do the Game Boy Advance po uh, Pocket, whatever they want to do. Because I feel personally, the Game Boy Advance has such a vast library. That it's capable uh, of handling its own with that. Uh, but uh, but the Game Boy library is actually double that. I know, but this the but the quality to me personally is just more on the advanced side than with the regular. I mean, there's only so much you can do with Tetris, <laughs> you know, which you know the is going to be there yeah, too. But the problem is the SP never came with a headphone jack unless they want to redo that. Um, yeah, well, that, that's I why they're doing the minis, you know, to to if they will, I should say they they could. Add some features that were never included in the original. Mm. I, yeah, I would I could, love for it to see... be the flip phone version, though. <laughs> that... I would, but but I would, but I would see, I would see though them creating the Game Boy Pocket, a uh, game, a Game Boy, uh, something in a Game Boy Pocket. It form says factor. here that the Game Boy had one thousand five uh, fifty six games, and the Game Boy Advance had uh, one thousand five hundred ten. Yeah, pretty much half. Yeah, but yeah, but did you count? Yeah, but did you count the Game Boy Color? No, I, I just said that, yeah. Like, including the Game Boy Color, there's 1,056. The Game Boy Advance has almost 500 more. Damn. I think it's, well, I think it's because and a lot it can of can play the Game Boy games. <laughs> yeah, except the micro. So technically it has 2,556 games. Uh, how do we how do we range that from that number to twenty? If we're gonna just slap twenty games well, into no, like that, I, I don't think they would do twenty. Maybe they would do forty. And the, but the thing is, the higher amount of games you put in there, the the price is also going to increase too. And you want to make yeah, sure that the price I, is right. at a consistent amount to yeah. where people can buy because it. Because they're gonna if they're gonna do it if they're gonna do it they're gonna do it at fifty bucks. But then again, though, technically technically they could charge less. For the Game Boy ones and then the Game Boy Advance ones, because you think you think about the sliding scale, right? You see how much they were on the the eShop. The yeah. Game Boy games were anywhere between two and five dollars, and then the Game Boy Advance ones on the Wii U were like seven dollars to ten dollars. I can't wait for them to just like for let's say if they do twenty games, you know for a fact five of them is gonna be all based on the Mario Advance ones. Like, it's going to be the Super Mario Bros. 2 Advance, Super Mario 3 Advance, Yoshi's Island Advance, Super Mario World Advance, etc. Uh, I expect it to be Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Mario Kart Super Circuit, the weird Mario pinball game. <laughs> you know, I, I listen, yeah. man, I, I need it as well to also include uh, gyroscope features because I want to have my, uh, my WarioWare game in there. Uh, like this I said, I, 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 the topsy tur what was it called? Not, it wasn't topsy turvy. That was Yoshi's topsy turvy. Twi no, uh, let's see. No, uh, it is uh, WarioWare. Sorry, not WarioWare. I know it's Yoshi topsy turvy. Ah oh, shit! Was it War Wario Micro or something like that? If anybody in the chat can remember the name of it, it's the one where you actually tilt your Game Boy to match with the movement of Drill the game. Dozer? A twister. 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 Yeah. Yes, that one. You're asking for at this point. You might as well just buy the the stuff you need to play it yourself. True. I well, I have it to begin with, but I'm just uh, saying it would well, be the, nice the to have problem, it all compact. The biggest problem. Well, the, well, the biggest still. There's there's some there's some huge drawbacks. The original Game Boy Advance did not come with a backlit screen. I mean, you can you can do that, but uh, the the screens the the screens cost like maybe forty fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you, and then the original Game Boy Advance SP came with a frontlit screen, and then the backlit screen is the uh, AGS 101. Uh, but apparently, the refresh rate is worse. The ghosting is worse on that than the than the frontlit screen. So it was the same kind of deal, um, you know, with that. So uh, they would have to, they would have to cut down the cost immensely if they wanted to do it right if they, they wanted to do a mini console yeah um, i'm curious to see if they ever intend to do it or maybe they're just going to be like ask instead of doing that we'll just add it to nintendo switch online and call it a day there 
I don't know what they plan to do, but whatever it is, for sure, I'm going to put money down on it. Because uh, similar to the Sega thing that they're trying to do, uh, I always love keeping these things as novelty items. But I think they should put it on the Switch uh, shop and just call it a day. Exactly. But if they do that before Nintendo 64, I think we're going to have riots. <laughs> so uh, The biggest problem, as I mentioned before, I mean, the last few years, the biggest issue is that there is no arm single board computer that is that is at low of low enough of a cost that can actually run n64 you have a problem we have a problem running n64 games on a raspberry pi 4 which is a 35 dollar computer and that has that has freaking cortex a72 cords quad core a72 cores and we still can't freaking run n64 at full speed yeah i'm curious to see how nintendo's gonna handle all of that Eventually, they'll find a way, but for now, though, it's all still a mystery. It, mm -hmm. A fun one, though, nonetheless, to speculate about. So, I'm looking forward to whatever Nintendo's next goal is. Now, as in regards to the whole Sega thingy, uh, I could give two shits about it, unfortunately. Because, first of all, 200 bucks for a, next, a magnifying glass? No, thank you. <laughs> I, I'd rather spend money on a lot of other things than I go for that, man. You know, there are so many better options, honestly. If you want to have the novelty items, okay, that's fine and all. But uh, i rather recommend you guys spend money on something else. In fact, I have a good idea for what game you should go and spend that money on. Okay. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield because they just got a brand new trailer for their expansion pass, which we will have to talk about right about now. So what do you guys say? We're going to take a little Let bit. Let me make that $27 purchase. Yeah. It's, well, actually, it's technically $60 plus $20 more. I know people were expecting another thing, but we can't do that no more. So sadly, that's no longer a thing. But let's take a chance to go and talk about the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield expansion pass. Because as I stated, we've recently received a brand new trailer highlighting what we will be expecting to see within the first DLC pack. And with a surprise twist, also comes with DLC pack 2 footage, which is odd for me honestly because it's like we are way ahead in regards to when that's gonna drop so i would think they would have put a little bit more focus first on to the first dlc pack then rather go and focus on the second one but that's just my opinion though what we got in this trailer still nonetheless is exciting because fan favorite pokemon are returning a new area to explore new mechanics and gimmicks that are going to be there it is looking exciting but what makes it so great as and, well in uh, my opinion in regards to this trailer it did a wonderful job in showing enough but not to the point of straight up revealing everything because we as of right now seen the visuals and everything for the island but we still have no full idea as to how it's all fully well designed like we don't know how the map is overall how big it is how small it is all the pokemon we only know half of it so far uh so i want to pass this on to you guys here nicole i want you guys to let me know personally how do you guys feel about this uh this expansion pass trailer that we received and what in particular from this dlc pack from the first part anyway that you guys are looking forward to the most so uh take it away guys First of all, why the hell did we have to wake up to freaking just watch a three-minute trailer? That's what I said. I, I mean, I still have the reaction up here. I never uploaded it because it's three minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Three-minute yeah. warning. And we were all dead. Like, legitimately, none of us... Like, we were excited for the DLC. But when that three-minute shit dropped, none of us boosted enthusiasm at all whatsoever. Everybody was like, oh, yay, it's coming back. In fact, honestly... From the reaction alone, we were more excited for what's to come in the second pack than we were for the first pack. That's right. And it's not to say disrespect towards the first pack, it's just more so the first pack seems to be focusing more on the single player side than it is focusing more on the multiplayer side, which the multiplayer is going to be later this year. And given that a lot of us has stated before in the past how multiplayer has been the biggest key factor for our enjoyment within the series, uh, for us personally, it's like a, 
okay, I guess this is a nice little novelty here, but personally I want to get to the multiplayer stuff already, which we will still get in the first pack, but it's just extended upon even more in the second one. I mean, as you saw in the trailer, man, we all get to work together like we actually are in the same room or something, and we get to explore the fields together. Like, how cool is that? I've always wanted to kind of have something like that structure where we can all play together in real time and roam around the maps in real time and work together to uh, achieve whatever it is we're going to be achieving in the in the second pack. So, yeah, to me, I, I was more excited for whatever the second DLC wave had for us than I was really for the first. So that, that's my take on it. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, anybody else in particular want to add anything that they saw? You know, well, we saw, well, we saw, we saw Entity Maze, and we saw the world, and we saw the flame, and we saw, the... yeah. <laughs> it's like once again, it's great. We got it. We got the trailer, but it's like, well, what you else? You made us wake up early for this. Exactly. <laughs> but I think they probably did that so they wouldn't run the risk of it getting um uh, of it getting leaked because they obviously we've had continuous problems with that before where the information is just about to launch and then somebody has to come in and start spoiling everything. Um obviously we got just to break down everything, I believe we got the Galarian uh slow bro evolution. We're getting slow Galarian slow king later in the uh the next pack. And I made a comment on that. I thought it was pretty funny that Slowpoke's evolutionary line has slowly been expanding, no pun intended, slowly been expanding um, as as the years have gone by. In Gen 2, we got a, a separate evolution uh, into Slow King. And then in Gen 6, they gave him a mega evolution form with the Slow, uh, slow Bro mega evolution. And then now he's got two more Galarian for he's not He's got a Galarian form and two more evolutions. I think that's kind of cool. That that happened. I believe we also get cool little things like uh, there's this pot of soup or whatever that you can eat, where you and your Pokemon can eat, and Pokemon that have the ability to Gigantamax can now Gigantamax. So now we don't have to like go out on raids, which that kind of sucks though, because that was one of the reasons we liked doing the uh, we like doing the raids with find the Pokemon that were exclusively Gigantamax, and obviously they'll still be out there. But I believe now it, it'll be a lot easier for us to just uh, feed a Pokemon the soup. They need a Gigantamax. Now, granted, there's probably some, some criteria that have to be met. I don't think you can just eat the soup anytime you want. You probably got to do something. Mm. Some tedious form of grinding or something in order to make the soup or have some ingredients or whatever put together. But it probably costs like a lot of the food ingredients that you get in the wild area. Mm. Maybe, probably. I don't know. Maybe, and and that would make sense too because we got we got a lot of food. You get a lot of food in the wild area, like more than you plan on making curry for. Yeah, so I, got, I, I got like freaking like 43, 43 bags of freaking noodles or whatever. Yeah, I got like tons of sack like of potatoes, potatoes and stuff. Yeah, and so if you need like a large amount of food in order to mix together to make that stew. In order for your Pokemon to Gigantamax, that uh, that'll be a fine trade. At least that'll give us something to. Give It'll give you more of a purpose to kind of actually chat with the people yeah, roaming yeah, around the yeah, islands. Yeah, and check for those ingredients because those were almost a dead currency to me. If Somebody says I think you have to do raid to get ingredients. Oh, that's that would cute. be a nice twist. Like, let's say in the main wild area, you get candies. In this area, you only get in in exchange of candies, you get ingredients. Yeah, which would so, be a nice twist. Yeah, I would prefer that. Yeah, that's fine. And well, what else we got? We got um, we got this weird cramorant invention. We don't know what it does. Yet. I think it like it exchanges. Isn't it like a form of alchemy? Like you could put certain items in to make new items or something? Yes, you put in various items within it, and then it'll come out as one item. As to what yeah. that item is, sometimes it'll be randomized, other times it'll be something else. Okay, that's pretty cool. We got Squirtle and Bulbasaur, which means we're getting Gigantamax, Blastoise, and Venusaur. It's kind of sad that they had to come in after Charizard, but obviously Charizard had priority. Um... Mm. A lot of the story is going to involve you and Cub Fu. I'm actually kind of glad about that. I'm glad they decided to 
give us a mythical Pokemon without making the mythical Pokemon just some random gif. Like, I like when you give us a legit story to go along with it. Right. I miss that from, like, the DP and BW days when they had that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, give us, like, a, give us more of a reason to, I, I hate when they just give us a mythical Pokemon or you got to enter some code and you get it through a stupid mystery gif or something. That's the worst, that's mm. the worst way to distribute them, um, to distribute one. Also, obviously, we mm -hmm. got the returning Pokemon, which TSS already stated. And then we get the Crown Tundra, which is what KG's more, uh, you said you were more excited for, because it allows you to travel to dungeons with multiple people. Exactly, than... because it's based on, like, Dynamax Adventures, which is a four-player game where you go underground into the Max Raid Battle Dance. But the way they structured it in the trailer made it seem that you have four different routes, mm -hmm. and depending on which route you select you will find that said Pokemon. But the thing is, you don't know what it is until you get to it, and oftentimes you might end up finding yourself against a flimsy Pokemon, whereas in a different route, you might end up finding yourself a legendary. You never know. It, it's all randomized. It's up to, to pure guessing as to which route you go. Yeah. I believe mm -hmm. also we're getting um, what I'm looking forward to, at least. I think the, the legendaries are in going to be in raid battles, too. Yes, that, that's exactly what's the main oh, game. Oh, Lord have mercy on us if we ever had to face a, a, a G-Max um, alternate Crossma. <laughs> <laughs> no, but although alternate Crosma though would, would be pretty be cool, fun, that that would yeah. be cool. Okay, maybe not G Max, but D Max. That G D Max alternate Crosma. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't need two. I hate when like power ups stack up on each other like that because then it'll look ridiculous. Yeah, but, but uh, um, I think it is gonna be cool that uh, hopefully that they treat the legendaries like they did with Mewtwo, where you gotta like be creative and think about how what strategy you can use to beat them. Because five-star Pokemon, uh, in most raid battles, it really just boils down to if you and your power partners have really strong Pokemon that that thing is weak to. Whereas in these battles, or at least a Mewtwo battle, you had to be very creative. You had to think of a, a, a nice, legit strategy in order to beat the super boss Pokemon. So I hope we do still have that option. Yeah. Another interesting thing about it, too, to think about is just... Are they going to be just as brutal as, say, the ones in the Mewtwo D-Max fight we had? Remember how difficult that fight was with the limited time you I, had? I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying like, I hope they make some bosses on that level. That's basically the same thing I'm saying. It's like, I, I, hope I think it will work that way, yeah. yeah um, I would like I, super bosses. I think the way they're going to have it structured, uh, this this situation kind of reminds me of uh, Wizard 101, which for those of you guys who aren't familiar uh, with the game, there are some certain chambers or boss rooms, you would say, where literally, like, for you to really start the battle against these bosses or these really tough, you need to at least have four players entering the chamber all together, knowing that, you know, hey, we need to make sure that you guys are all together, you're ready for the challenge, and that you guys are prepared for whatever's coming ahead. So I think the same way is going to be set up for these uh, legendary raids for this DLC. Now, one last Should thing like I only ask for, though. Hmm. Please let the online be stable enough for us to be in the same room. Otherwise, if one of us disconnects, we're all screwed. <laughs> so. I think I've had a moment where I've disconnected from any raid battles now, so... I know, but I'm just saying because now we're not simply only in the field of battle. Now we're also walking around in an arena. I think this is also a smarter way for you to, um, you know, to ensure that you have all players rather than having to end up with like random NPCs or random AIs yeah, I was just to have you in battles. Anything, I think that narrows it down to just the players that are playing, which should make it a lot easier. It's less stress on the. Uh, on us, the yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, of course, you would have some lagging in the wild area itself when you turn on the Wi-Fi. But that's because the Wi-Fi is trying to... That's because the game is literally trying to register the fact that there's like 100 people in the wild area at once. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess now they're going to probably streamline it to where it's only going to just be U4 and then there it'll just take its course. Yeah. And I'm excited for that, man. Because from what I'm told, it's apparently like a limitless one, too. Like, there's mm -hmm. really no limit at all. The, I, I want to say it might stop after you fail to actually defeat one of them. 
and that's it and then the, you you suddenly get booted out and then you have to go back at it again mm. or maybe it's like you have to do a couple of waves and then eventually you get to the end point and then from there you get the chance to maybe uh fight against the legendary or fight against a very powerful pokemon yeah either or but if, if it's going to be legendaries uh, of course, I want the legendaries to be hard, but if it's gonna just say be the standard powerful Pokemon, like let's put for example like a Talonflame or uh, you know like a Garchomp and whatnot, I hope that with the with those kind of Pokemon, they treat it a little differently, where they could be like fully maxed out in their IVs or something like that. So when you catch it, they're fully maxed. Because if you're gonna fight a, a powerful Pokemon, might as well go the extra mile and to make it feel uh, unique enough to where when you do catch it it'll still feel as satisfying as if you were to catch a legendary Pokemon because like a perfect IV, Garchomp or something like that, who wouldn't love that? Right. So I'm not sure the route they're going to take this whole thing, but I feel with this alone, the second DLC pack, it could add so much replayability. It is insane to think about because you know they're going to have events on like a monthly basis where it's like, oh, this month, the main focus of the Legendary is going to be based on the Pokemon from Black and White or X and Y, etc. And you might even get a chance to encounter their shiny form too, you know, something like that. Right. They, there's so right. much potential they've with the doing, second pack. You know, they've been like, I know we haven't been like <clears throat> engaging in them a lot, but they've been doing pretty well in letting us know, hey, we're doing events here. We do, we're doing little things. Like, I like the fact that they like Pokemon's actively getting involved in, in the online world that they did make like they they even if you look on Cerebi real fast i can show you um they they'll make announcements where it's like hey um like the the Corsola Mr. Mime Galarian Mr. Mime Galarian Ponyta uh Berserker they got that event out they got um they've got the wild area news where the wild area event now shifted Pokemon sword and shield with Gigantamax meow boosted and stuff like that. So they, they update this stuff a lot. They let you know the, uh, which Pokemon are out there in the wild area for you to catch. So I, I like the fact that they're, that they're being deeply involved. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that, um, you know, they're taking this seriously, if you will. The, this is how. Pokemon oh yeah, definitely. Done. And it's weird. I think black and white tried something like this weirdly. Is it with that mm -hmm. dream world thing? Yeah, it was with that. Thing yeah, you could play as an NPC in somebody else's game for, for very briefly. They black and white had a lot of stuff that we didn't really get the chance to really explore because by the time that you got to diving in it, Pokemon X and Y were already in now. Also, they were mainly local related stuff. Yeah, it was mostly local and infrared stuff because they were still playing with infrared technology. Yeah. So I feel like that since Gen Five, this is the most I think Pokemon's actually went out of their way to make a uh, an all an all interactive world. And the Islands of Armor is definitely a, a big step tw towards that. And it's, it's a good price. I mean, you're paying for both things for thirty dollars for each game. So so like it. it like I thought for a second, I don't know why I knew this already, but I thought I was just buying the Islands of Armor. But no, I'm buying both the Islands of Armor and the Crown Tundra in one pack for thirty dollars, which is a good deal. Unless I decide to buy it again for my Pokemon Sword game, then then that means I'm spending sixty dollars. Yeah, but but from the trailer alone, Tyrone, do you feel justified with that purchase so far? Just from witnessing the trailer alone and not really experiencing the game itself. Absolutely, because I know that Sword and Shield is the one game that uh, gives you a lot more than you bought. Only because they'll tell you a lot of, like you said before, they tell you a lot of information, but they still keep enough under wraps to make it a um, to make it an experience. Yeah, like I said, one of the best moments about Sword and Shield to me is when I bought the game, and I was already shown a couple of Pokemon thanks to the trailers that we got. But the minute I started playing the game, I got introduced to all of these new Pokemon that I never saw before. I got introduced to all this new stuff I didn't know existed. I was able to go to these new areas that I didn't know about. The game wasn't spoiled by leaks and news. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was very grateful for that. Now, Richie, did you have anything to say about some of this stuff here? Because I know I talked a lot. 
Mm. I mean, mm. kind of sucks. I have to wait a little, just wait a little bit longer um, for a specific Pokemon, which is Garchomp. But since we're talking about uh, uh, what was the first DLC name? The uh, Isle of the Armor. Isle of Armor. Yeah. Isle of Armor. Okay. Um, I like when I see an Isle of Armor. I definitely think it's a nice step. Uh, obviously, of course, you know you're not going to please. You're not going to entertain the entire masses. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I think it's a nice. Uh, I think it's a nice DLC of what we're seeing so far. I'm very curious on how they plan on shaping up the story because. Yes, the Pokemon are nice, and yes, the environment looks, you know, good. Much dismay to the, to the Twitter critics. Um, but one of my biggest pains is kind of like the story, because obviously there's, uh, there has to be a story made with these new, legendaries. I mean, I, mm. I mean that's that's just out obli- not necessarily an obligation, but like, whenever I see a legendary, I, there's bound to be a story. So I'm very curious to see what, how they're going to shape up the plot line, and if it ends up being crap. I'm not saying that the DLC will be a failure, um, but I just think that most of what will make the DLC good outside of the visuals, the Pokemon and stuff, I think uh, the story will have to be not necessarily S tier, but at least um, good, good enough. enough that will, uh, I guess, please people, if that makes any sense. Well, my thing- yeah, yeah. Well, well, Go ahead, Tyrone. Oh, okay. Well, my thing is, too, I also like that this DLC is expanding the wild area. That means they know full well that the wild area is the biggest selling point of this of this particular generation of Pokemon mm. games. They, I'm glad they realized that because, unfortunately, it's bad for, like, when you actually go into the, the towns because the towns are very... The towns in this game kind of suck. They look colorful, but you can't really explore it because all the doors, for some reason, are shut for once. (laughs) You have no incentive to look through them because they're all very small. It doesn't give you a reason to visit them either. Yeah, they're all all very small and all very limited. Uh, But I will say, I think they know full well that the wild area is their biggest biggest selling point. Mm -hmm. Uh, The biggest thing about this Pokemon game that keeps me coming back is the level of freedom you have in this game and how it promotes exploration it promotes you going out of your way to look all around the wild area and a lot of people I've heard have just wanted Pokemon games that are just this literally just you doing this like yeah you can travel from town to town but the whole world be this wild area rather than just this like limited area here, so I'm gonna. So any expansion to me is always welcome, and I'm mm-hmm. they're expanding it twice. Obviously, the wild area is, is getting two expansions, so we're making the world pretty much twice as big by the time all this DLC is over. <laughs> the wild areas in itself could equal up to the size of Galar for all we exactly, know. Exactly, exactly. Like the largest portions of Gal- Galar are made out of the wild area stuff. So it's good to see that this is the first Pokemon world where you actually get to really like interact with everything. And it's not just, oh, I went to this town. And I'm never coming back unless I need, like, one specific item or TM or something. Mm-hmm. They know full well the wild areas where you're going to go to catch these Pokemon that are in the wild Absolutely. area. Find these, find these dens. Look for these items. Look for all these things. And I'm glad they decided to use the DLC to do that. Because this could have been literally like, a oh, we'll use the DLC to access a train so that you can go to this one little spot in the game and talk to like two or three people and then you'll never come back here ever again. Ooh, it could have easily cool. been like how Oros did. Like Oros has a battle area has where the battle frontier should have been, but it's wasted. Because all you do there is fight the battle chateau. And that's right. it. Chateau. So I'm glad they decided to expand upon the world and make it more, you know, make it bigger. And they obviously knew that, uh, like Richie said, the story alone isn't going to be the only thing here. It's the story combined with the expanded wild area, along with the fact that there's going to be returning Pokemon. I know that a lot of people are very pissy about the fact that, oh, they're hiding their Pokemon behind a paywall. This is no different than what they did in the old days in Gen 3. Like, you need, to, in Gen 3, you needed to buy fucking XD, Coliseum, 
Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, and Leaf Green to have a complete Pokedex. So I don't want to yeah. hear. And those paywalls were higher. You literally had to buy two $60 games and a bunch of $40 games. We're here. And you probably get, some new consoles. You're getting returning Pokemon for about 30 bucks. In addition to the Wild Area expansion in the story. So, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like... Returning Pokemon to me is always a is always a very good thing. One, it gives people a chance to reunite and catch Pokemon that they prefer to catch. Also, they can make the Pokemon tournament legal now because you know they'll be uh, they'll be in the Galar region now because the, the Pokemon that are allowed in tournaments have to have the Galar region symbol in order to be tournament legal. So now you can actually use them in tournaments. And um, what else was I going at? Oh. And this also means that, like, you'll you'll have a reason to complete that National Dex more, well, complete the Pokedex a little bit more. Like, if you were Pokemon hunting, your hunt continues again. The thing is, um, I wonder where you're going again if you do complete, like, you know, this next batch of um, a po a Pokemon in your Pokedex. Like, I know, I know for for the people who already completed the, um, you know, the pre DLC Pokedex, mm -hmm. you, you obviously get, you obviously get a rewards like the shiny charm and whatnot, right? Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of curious why you're going to get it if you complete the Pokédex for this DLC. I'm sure they'll probably give you, like, nice little things. Probably, one, they'll probably give you another, like, a, an expansion on a certificate or something, too. They might give you, like, a Master Ball. They might give you, like, this new item that might help Shiny Hunting. Increase it by 0.5. No. <laughs> yeah, nice little thing. Hey, like that, that would that would be pretty cool though. An increase of like the uh, shiny percentage rate for going out of your way to collect the other Pokemon from this island. So it could go yeah. from like a 0. 0.5 to like a 2.0 increase for shiny rate. Yeah, the, yeah. Somebody put the EXP charm and stuff. Uh, I know you already get a lucky egg, but they could probably have an expansion on the lucky egg where you super like, lucky the, egg. Yeah, like all the Pokemon get boosted XP or something or. You know, so something something nice like that, something that'll allow you to really, uh, to really want to catch the rest of those mines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, overall, I'm glad that we're getting these. I'm glad we're finally getting like, I'm glad Pokemon's finally like locking down, and giving us good DLC. I'll say good mm -hmm. DLC because they've technically done DLC before. It's just been very sloppy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're finally getting, like, good DLC. And like Richie, I believe you said, I'm glad um, that we're getting a legit story mode for the Legendary. Because I don't think we're getting one for Zarud. I think they're just eating Zarud in a magic box. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, it's a game. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a movie tie-in, so. Yeah, but that, yeah, that's point, true. Yeah, but at this point, you're giving, like, you're giving cutscenes and stories to, like, oh, Galarian, great, Zapdos, so. Moltres, and Arnakuno and uh, Kupfu. So why not Zarud? At this point, like, give us like Honestly. a little like, oh, you can travel to this one dungeon known as the Sacred Forest, and Zarud's in it. Plus the movies, Dwight. So what the fuck? Well, well, that's we got nothing know. to do with. We yeah. have nothing. It's nothing to do with the games here. But I'm just saying that if they, if, if they, I mean, when it's all said and done, we have to think about the delay is probably going to be a total of a two month setback, probably. If mm -hmm. we want, if we want to be a little bit optimistic about this. And uh, speaking of which, actually, if you actually look on on the official Pokemon Japanese uh, channel, they've actually re-uploaded all of the for all of the trailers with the coming soon text on it mm. um, instead of the actual date. So, I mean, they're still intending on releasing it into theaters. It's just that we don't know when. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 so so about it. Coco didn't seem like based on the trailer, at least from what I see, because the trailer's job is to get you interested in the movie. Um, he Coco only had one, like sadly, it. which is always the introduction yeah. trailer. Coco so. to me doesn't seem like my cup of tea. I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be an okay movie, but it's not. It hasn't done anything to make me go, oh shit, I gotta see that. But it's <laughs> done by your favorite director, man. I know, but they still haven't done anything to make. Oh no, no! The first trailer never does a good job with that. They always make no. sure to save everything for the final trailer or second trailer because they want to just get your intriguement in the first one and then get your excitement we in the second get more, one. And we were supposed to get more trailers, but then plus the thing they're happened. doing the alternate universe, Ash, which means like they're doing their best to make sure. It's... I, I 
I miss when Ash did shit in the middle of his journey or in the middle of what was happening. And this could have easily been like a, oh, Sakuragi wants to travel to this forest to discover information on Pokemon. And then Zaru could have showed up with Coco and stuff. And you could have had Go have some fun interactions with Ash and they could have done some fun stuff in the movie. But no, we don't get that. We get just we didn't really. We never, we never really got canonical movies until like DP ones anyway. Yeah, but I, I think it's more so just no, using Gen the characters. Has, Gen 5 has Iris and Silent do stuff with Ash and K Keldeo and stuff. And Gen 6 has uh, Serena. And, and I, I think he meant like canonically, I said, though. I said, I, said D, I said DP. No, I'm no, I'm talking... I mean, like, in the... like With our heroes inside of it. Like, I'm, I'm getting sick of Ash and just Ash and Pikachu. Yeah, what happened to my boy Charizard? Where'd he go? No, I mean, like, I'm getting sick of the movie that no. really just compliments on the fact that Ash has no connections with what's happening in the story right now. Yet, yes, the movies aren't canon, but I do like seeing the people that Ash is traveling with be in the movie actively. I think my in my favorite thing about this upcoming I film is how limited, or, yeah, Ash is in this one, because... The reason why The Power of Us was so good was because it didn't really surround Ash's character. It was about the world around him. Well, yeah, I, I let that fly because that movie can get away with that. But now you use, you, you've used all your alternate re, uh, universe theme. No, no, no. Because now the gimmick this time around is Pokemon itself. And that's it. And then this one boy. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I'm bored of it now. I'm over it now. That like, was like, two or no. three years ago. <laughs> Power of Us was the, the last movie to make me go, okay, that's fine. Ash and Pikachu, along with others. That's cool. I want to see Go in a movie. Like, oh, I no, no. I'm not movie. denying that. I would love to see Go, too. I think that would be wonderful. But I think for a film like this, I think I it's structured Moon, well for just to be Ash by himself. I, I got why Sun and Moon could do it because uh, because there's too many people. It's a cluster. Yeah. But Unless you can't do a movie in Lola. Yeah. I, I guess. I mean, they could have pulled something. Off. No, it would no. not. It would, it would not have made sense if it, at all. Yeah, because if they had done that in the films, then people are gonna start questioning why it's not in the actual show, given how small the islands are. Exactly. You know. so. Oh well, they could have easily just bullshitted. Oh, we're we're sailing to some distant place. That's easy. I mean, they could just get on a boat, and that's the all. Logic still applies. And then that just never returns to that island again. Or the island gets destroyed afterwards. That could easily be The that. only concept I could have seen work on that would have just been to, like, go to ultra wor wormholes or something like that. To go to different oh, yeah, dimensions. yeah. Or go to an alternate dimension, actually, now that I stop to think about it. But I don't know, like, how they do that story-wise mm. to flow well. But at the end of the day, it's already too late anyway. So we can't yeah. really say anything on that. I'm it just saying, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I guess... It's unfair because I think my favorite movie is Pokemon Movie 3, and that's where Ash, Brock, and Misty all openly do shit in the movie. Yeah. Where, like, Brock has a battle, and he uses Onyx and Vulpix and shit, and we see Misty use fucking Golding, Golding of all Pokemon, is is in it, and Star Yu's doing stuff, and we get to see Ash use Totodile, Cyndaquil, Chikorita, all to fight Entei, and... And help Ash get up to the tower, and we get to see Charizard come back and fight off against Entei. And, and I don't know, everybody contributed. Everybody did something. Where here, well, how many Pokemon does Ash have? Oh, it's just Pikachu. Well, well fuck. Again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have anything from his prior. No Dragonite? Nope, not going to be in this movie. No Gengar? Nope, nope. No Raylou? Nope, 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 nope. nope. Like, uh, like, I like when I see the cast actually be involved. Yeah, but the movie is not about him. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, the, I don't know. I just, I, I guess, I don't know, the, the movie Coco just hasn't done anything to make me go, oh, I'm, I'm so ready for this. It, it kind of feels like Ashes meets Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy was raised by Zarude. Zarude is... The protector of the forest. Movie Team Rock is going to do something dumb. Forest is probably going to catch on fire. Some calamity is going to happen. Zarude's going to do a lot. The kid's going to be like, don't do it, Zarude. And Zarude's going to just nod its head, get itself hurt. And, and, so they're yeah. going to probably sing some Bare Necessity song because they're trying to do that. Yeah. Bare Necessities. Yeah. And, yeah, and Zarude, I don't know. It just it feels like the, the formula has been done before. Yeah, really? Uh, I, I, really? I'm thinking about it. I've never recalled no. this kind of formula being done before because Ash never been by himself before <laughs> to this no, like extent. I, 
I mean, the, like when he's with others, the, like the plot line's been done. Eh, I, well, it all depends. Or, you know how they or, say, man, sometimes you can always take a product or an idea that's already been used and kind of give it a new yeah, coat of like, paint. They asked the, the, the Asidious Boy Relief raised by Pokemon, Crocodile, like, what the ruck? Boy raised by Pokemon, I, I kind of see where this is going. I, I, I see the, the direction this is walking towards. Yeah, but the thing is, though, we like I said, we haven't really gotten the real trailers yet. Like, we got the one trailer that actually had stuff right. in it, but we don't really have the final trailer. Mm. So we don't really know what else. There could be something else. Maybe, just maybe, they're actually using this time to maybe... Um, finalize something else because if they're going to be taking this long if if let's say let's say we we let, let's just put it into perspective yeah the end the the production the production has been shut down for six weeks so six weeks would mean approximately two months so if they do come out with this movie like let's say let's let's just let me just let me just let me just pull a date out of my ass like maybe well, let me see here. It, it probably will, will launch on like a Thursday. Let's see. So line 10 was a Friday, right? So yes. it's going to be a Friday. So let's figure, let's figure, okay, they're going to release it on 9-11. Okay, fine. 9-11 means nothing in Japan, really. Okay. So September 11th, right? Or September 4th or maybe September 18th, right? That's a delay of two months. Then I would expect them to maybe make the final trailer by like August if they're going to be going that route because we don't know anything yet. If we know that we that we know that they resumed production of the anime, but we do not know if they resumed production yet of the movie because it's a whole different ball of wax. Exactly, it's it's done by so, a different crew, etc. Even though it's under the same studio, so yeah, the the stuff regarding that is still a mystery, but. Uh, hopefully it's something to where it doesn't affect the quality of what we would expect from the film right. itself, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, but only time will tell, honestly. And I feel a little bad for Pokemon because, unfortunately, Pokemon isn't the only film to have been pushed back. It's also yeah. been other films as well. So now, say, when the films do come back into theaters, it's going to have a lot of competition to go against this time around. Because I think the Conan film was delayed too, if I recall that, correctly. Yeah, that's right. Because the Conan, the Co the Conan, <clears throat> the Detective Conan film was supposed to be like April seventeenth or something. Exactly. So imagine yeah, yeah. if it happens to be in September around the time Pokemon returns too. Like it's gonna have some heavy competition there for all we know. So it's all a matter of when uh, and how they approach this film. But for now, I think it's still too early to tell. Cause well. It's June, so right. We'll we'll find our answers momentarily, I guess. Right. <clears throat> but yes, yeah, yeah, so... I, I would expect I would expect though that the Conan movie is actually the the, the Meitan de Conan movie is actually more complete than the Pokemon movie is right now. Yeah, because they were already ahead of schedule. I think they were like right. a month behind before uh, this whole pandemic happened for us. Well, so they... you think you think you think at, you think they staggered release dates? It's a, it's a gap of three months, so. I think I think they're waiting for all the restrictions to uh, expire, probably up to like stage three. Because right now, at this point, um, I think Tokyo is at like step two at this point. Yeah. Um, where they still have to do social distancing in like theaters and stuff, so they probably don't want to put like the heavy hitter movies now because the box office attend the box office uh, earnings won't be as great. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it all depends on what they want to do, or they or they could have an additional, they could have a longer run. Um, but hopefully, we'll have the anime movies staggered enough that it's not going to impede on one another. Because let's say, for example, they're going to do the let, let's just say from a theoretical standpoint, okay, we're going to release Conan next month, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then that still would give Pokemon leeway of two months. Usually, usually the the Japanese films they would last anywhere between two and two and a half months in the movie theater anyway. So by the time the movie movie's run ends, there's not going to be a lot of people that haven't seen the movie yet. But like I said, uh, we have no 
issue. We have no, we have no recollection of this at all. We have no announcement. TMS has not come out and said, Oh, detective Conan is going to be this. And, and, uh, OLM hasn't, and, and TPCI hasn't come out. Uh, TPC hasn't come out and said, okay, we're going to release it at this date. Nothing is set in stone at this point. So, but I would imagine though that they would have to time it to where the one doesn't impede on the other, which means that it might be delayed further depending on what they do. Yeah. So once again, only time will tell when that yeah. arrives. And hopefully it'll still come out as to be a fantastic film and not with many mm-hmm. competitions. I, I can't say for certain as to when that's going to happen, uh, but we can only hope for the best. So with that being said, though, I feel like we've had our chit chats on, I guess, a bit of the film side as well as our discussion in regards to the DLC pack for Sword and Shield being of the Isle yeah. of Armor and the cr- mm-hmm. Crown's Tundra, I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, with that you know, said, I believe we are in our last discussion for tonight. Well, unless. Uh, well, this is still Pokemon related. Let, let's not forget that over the weekend we did get a new uh, Twilight Wings episode. Shit, I forgot about that. You're right. I forget about that. Really? To be fair, I was more excited for the Pokemon cartoon than I was actually for the Pokemon Twilight Wings that, that episode. Was- that, that should be a stolen discussion, by the way. No. <laughs> no, no. I, to, um, I, listen, first of all, my big issue with Twilight Wings, and it's not really Twilight Wings' fault. I mm-hmm. love Twilight Wings. I just hate it that this exists in the anime and not in the games. Because this is the, what the games needed to flesh out a lot of these characters, man. Because I began to appreciate her character so much after seeing this episode, man. I thought she was just this weird snobby kind of. Well, some shit. of it's hidden behind her bio in the lead card. But... Yeah, but it's like you're you're keeping it in words. You're not showing. You're just saying it, you know. And it's not even saying it. It's more like oh, it's written in this little text here. Like I would have loved to have seen some visuals or something to accompany that. Like maybe a picture or something to kind well... of show the growth of it in the games itself. Uh, then again, the anime has always been like you know sidetrack a little bit differently uh, compared to the games in terms of how they depict the characters. Oh yeah, I understand that completely. It's just because, man, I grew to love her character so much more thanks to this episode. Same here, especially when you come to notice who, uh, who she was before she got hired as, um, exactly. you know, um, Rose's yeah. assistant. Yeah, and the voice acting in this episode, once again, phenomenal for both sides, personally. I yeah. love, mm-hmm. I love the animation. I love the visuals. I love. It, it fits perfectly well with her character, like in that one montage scene that they had, where, like, for we example, have, the Rotom. We, we have the trash bag. Yeah, and then they had, like, the Rotom scene just invading the PC, and then she does a couple of click clacks on the computer, and then the Rotom, for some reason, passes out in the screen itself, and yeah. she just casually walks away. There's a pseudo in the middle of the office doing whatever the hell it's doing. A it's dancing being a bonsai tree. Yeah, uh, Dancing Mr. Rhyme. Uh, there was also a lot of cameos in the background from gym leaders in there too. So yeah. this episode had a lot of everything. My main issue, once again, is that... God, I wish I could have seen this kind of stuff in the video games. Or at least you have a little bit more of an extension like this in the games. Because you you grow to love these characters so much. And it's like... Why couldn't you be like this in the games? <laughs> you know, I know because it's hard to do. Enough, I've even said it too. It, it's just God, man. I, I wish. Time. Also, like, cause the game unfortunately censors around you. It'd be kind of weird to just randomly cut to another character. No, they did that with black and white. <laughs> well, yeah, black and well, black and white didn't cut to another character. It's still centered around you. You just happened to be in the area when it was happening. Actually, it led to some awkward scenes sometimes when I'm, like, standing in the middle of Bianca going off on her dad. No, I'm talking about, like, in the Black and White 2 games. Didn't they have that whole flashback thing going down? Well, yeah, that. And those didn't last a long, really no, long. No, but they were still a concept nonetheless that still worked anyway. So, we got that. Also, as everybody in the chat is mentioning, yeah, the ball guy was unmasked. And he turned out to be a, a blondie, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, blonde dude. So, I mean, there you go, guys. You got your answer for uh, who Ball Guy is, and uh, he exists. But to to me, Evie, though, had you not brought that up, Evie, I genuinely 
would not have thought about talking about that episode at all whatsoever. Because it was something that just came by and left. Not saying it's bad in any way. It's just... It just went... Well, yeah, because Twilight Wings is not meant to... Also... It's only about five minutes, so it, it, it gives you what it needs and leaves. Exactly. It's not just it's not just that, but I believe this is the first Twilight Wings episode that actually premiered over the weekend, and not during the weekdays. Yeah, that, that is true, too. because of the push. Yeah, they had to delay it, and I guess they pushed it to the weekend, which was still a pretty good time to do so. So, it also got, unfortunately, shuffled in amongst other things that also tend to kind of come out on the weekends you know yeah. as well so that might have right. also been something that could have potentially hurt my judgment on the show itself but mm-hmm. I don't well, and know. also okay. and, yeah and then uh and also somebody was saying I, I think i read i think i read it in one of my chats where the um where they confuse dynamax with gigantamaxing Yes. Yeah, yeah, and Oleana goes off on the taxi driver. Yes. Was, wasn't it like they were talking about the Lapras's back or something? Yeah. He's, like he's originally like, they right, thought Lapras's, They originally thought that the uh, the the rock on Lapras's back was uh was a part of its body, but it's not. Which makes you question how it gets sucked into the ball then at that point. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I, I think at a point when a Pokemon holds an item long enough, it just becomes part of their. Wait, if that thing's a, is not, if that thing's not a part of its body, how the hell does that Gigantamax then? So it's it I, is the SpongeBob Boulder. It just Gigantamax it to becoming a thing on Lapras's back. I think if a like I said, if a Pokemon holds an item long enough, it just becomes a part of their structure. Yeah, I guess I don't really know. The, the, that that moment confused the shit out of me, though. <laughs> okay, but for real, though, now I assume we, got now we can. Now we can move on to Poketoon. Yes, yep. now let us... No. <laughs> Poketoon was a simple one-and-done shit. It was nice. Scraggy had the massive boner that could compete against Donald Duck's boner from that one little frame. But so it, there you I, go. I enjoyed it. I mean, I mean... Oh, same here. Nice, yeah. Yeah, because it because it reminds me of like the nineteen forties Tex Avery Looney Tunes. I hope this isn't the only time they do this though. Yeah, I yeah, really I, I hope it isn't the only time they do it too. I, I also I also appreciate I also appreciated the old school kind of like Japanese ministry um, romanization of the of the char- of the um, artist names, and it was created by Bus and Tulip Stu- and I think Tulip. And there, there's a, there's a, there was a few studios. They did that, an amazing that, job, though, for real. I, I personally loved it. I think they nailed it with the especially art on direction. the music. I, yeah. Although yeah, the motif, yeah. I did hate, though. I saw a comment that said, "Oh my god, they did a Pokemon episode in the style of Cuphead," and I'm like. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I read because that people, shit because people are people are young and uncultured, and they never seen Looney Tunes, the real Looney Tunes, in their lives. Yeah. Although, to to be fair, if you guys haven't had a chance to yet watch the Looney Tunes cartoons that they've premiered recently, I honestly think they are pretty good. That 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 Sylvester episode honestly still had me laughing my ass off though, uh, where he went to the zoo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, okay. That that's our little small review on that as well. So if you guys needed more reviews in this episode for tonight, there you go. You got your Twilight Wings review. You got your Poketoons review. Are there any other Pokemon related things that we need to review? I think that's it. Well, we got forty minutes left, so we might as well get in into it. Alrighty then. Now let us take this opportunity to talk about <laughs> the actual episode of the week yes ladies and gentlemen after so much time that has passed we finally return once again to the wonderful world of pokemon in a brand new episode of pocket monsters 2019 otherwise known as pokemon journeys the series this episode titled massive panic sakuragi park is focused on ghost pokemon except for one in particular which we'll get into soon yeah so apparently there's some kind of chaos that's going within the park in sakuragi's lab uh the food that was given to the pokemon have been taken that's been taken care of within there have disappeared and the pokemon have begun to fight 
Now Ash and Go decide to stay there to try to catch the culprit, but as time passes, the fighting tends, uh, ended up getting worse, and the Cascoon that were close to evolution unfortunately get involved in the mix in in the mix of all of that shit. So now, with that being said, will Ash and Go be able to figure out the culprit and put an end to it all? Or will things turn out into chaos? Well, if you've watched the episode, you already know the outcome. So yeah, I don't like it. Now, <laughs> uh, first of all, I think I, I thought I thought I thought it's actually one of the one of the uh, one of the best like what you would what you would call classic fillers in a very long time. I hate you know, that cheeky really bastard. I, I I just want to say this right off the bat. I filler, hate that yeah. that Scovit. I've filler, always hated filler. it. The squa- yeah yeah. It actually it, it actually it actually makes Scovit more annoying than it actually is in the game. So it actually, uh, pretty much like cemented it as the fucking most one of the most annoying pokemon on planet earth yeah i, wouldn't say, an- I wouldn't say annoying it's literally doing what what that squirrel does it hoards food yeah but th- the funny thing to me personally i love the smug face it gave at the very end of the episode when it looked back to ash and go the moment the pokedex completed the entry data for it and then it just gives that smug space and ash and go are like bro <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say say it was annoying. I think it was literally just doing what squavits do. Like, yeah, like, but that doesn't mean it make it any better, though. For real. Right, yeah, but I think the funny part was that Squavit was playing uh, coy with uh, with the other Pokemon when it was around uh, Golurk. Exactly. In fact, it was the one that called Golurk to look into the situation. Yeah, like it had no idea why the food was stolen when, in fact, it was the one that stole the food the whole time. Yeah, so to me, uh, with this episode, as TSS stated, I I love this episode so much. This was so chaotic fun, man. I loved everything about this episode. That that scene that you're seeing right there with Beedrill putting its needle around or its needle arm around Ash. I swear to I swear to God, for some reason in my mind, I just gave him like that old mafia voice whenever I saw the Beedrill right there next to Ash giving him with that arm needle thing around him. I don't know why. He he looked like that kind of thing that would be in part of the mafia, have like that uh, Scarface kind of voice on it, trying to say where my food at or something. Like it, it, it's all this episode. A lot of the faces. A lot the, of the faces are just. Where's plastic. my punchline? What are you talking? Where's my punchline? Because obviously I'm a joke to you. <laughs> and then Ash would be like, "What the hell also, are you talking about?" Favorite, favorite, favorite scene is the hungry Suba. Is the best Suba. Oh God! When they were trying to go after the leak from Farfetch. Yeah, yeah, but it's like it's like all of these all of these mini scenes where you just see. The Pokemon just hungry, and you just see the reactions. I like the scene some of the best where, stuff. I like the scene where one of the Pokemon's trying to um, w- Beedrill's attacking Oddish and female Nidoran, and yeah. because he's attacking female Nidoran, male Nidoran shows up to defend her, and you can see like her gushing in the background. Yeah. Oh, I, and, I, I thought it was pretty funny. I liked that. And then the Gengar scene. I love that they kept true to Gengar's character. Even after being caught by Ash, because it, Ash was like, hmm, mischievous characters. I got it, Gengar. And Gengar shows up in the back and be like, take that piece of shit and just throws a shadow ball in his back. I love that. And then after that, it just fades away. It just disappears. You don't even see it after that in the episode. That, that little moment right there was great, just because it fits so well with Gengar's characteristics in the show. So for that, I, I applaud it. But it also did something that I was really hoping to see from ghost pokemon this has been an issue that we've talked about multiple times within our podcast shows and even sometimes outside of it too uh ghost pokemon i love that he's catching them but we need to do a good enough job to personalize each individual one and they did that in my opinion very well in this episode aside from one pokemon because it turns out that one pokemon from Go has not shown up in this episode at all. And that's Execute. Execute. It never appeared at all whatsoever in this entire show or episode anyway. And that, that I confused me. Because I think Execute don't eat naturally. I think they had just absorbed no. the sun or some shit. No, but yeah, I still would have loved it anyway just to have seen it because, like, the Pokemon are hungry. It'd be like, hey, look, a bunch of eggs. We can crack open that one and just, you know, it's, it's insides or some shit. I think I think they already had enough gags. 
so that's probably why. That is true, but I, I would have still at least liked to have seen what the executes were up to. It's the only one that doesn't show up in this entire episode. It's kind of so weird to show all of Ghost Pokemon and minus that one. Exactly. You went out of your way to show everybody else what happened with uh with this one here. But anyway, uh, Rattata was not there too. I could have sworn I saw Rattata. I could have sworn I saw that. Why would they have everybody else but not the Rattata? I don't know, but um, he caught so many. So. That is true. There, there's only so much you can do with that, I guess. But still, I, I feel like if there was just a few left. See, look, there he, Rattata was there. It was just one frame at the very end of the episode. And so, there we boom. go. That's my favorite yeah. frame. That's the frame of the episode. Right <laughs> there. I'm gonna do an edit where I'm gonna have those two birds right there, and then in the middle is gonna be the Stantler uh, with that weird ass mouth smile thing it did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that shit was great, man. It, it is the perfect way to kind of summarize this episode. It, it is chaos, but it's fun through and through. I had a blast I, watching this yeah, episode. Yeah, this, this is one of the, this is one of those things is where we needed we needed to have that since the last episode had a lot of tension. Indeed. Um, I also want to say that because I, I have a list of things that I want to talk about that I love from this episode. And uh, the thing about this episode in particular, it's all up to interpretation as to how you want to view these Pokemon. Because body language is pretty much the key to this episode. It's the movement of the Pokemon, the music, and just the, the animation that accompanies it to kind of give you an idea as to how you want to show off these individual Pokemon and give them their own distinct, you know, personality. This episode can make you think of a lot of things. You know, for example, like I talked about with the Beedrill. I swear to you, that Beedrill is probably some Mafia member or something just from the, the poses it does. Like at the end of the episode too, I mean, it also know. wrapped its arm around Grimer as well. And Grimer was freaking out if you saw that frame at the very end. So, yeah, it's stuff like that that I love from this episode. It throws a lot of nice little moments that aren't really the main focus, but they're there in the background. And if you catch it, you're going to appreciate it a whole lot more. Especially one in particular that a lot of people are talking about from this episode. And that centers around Riolu. Because oh, yes. Riolu, of course, being the babby of the main cast right now. Uh, mm -hmm. We all know that the whole shtick is that Riolu doesn't like being held by even its own trainer, but it does cling on to them, you know, as we saw in this episode, it clings on to Ash in the leg and whatnot, and even at one point when Ash was running to go and try to save the Cascoon, it still uh, uh, clung on tight to Ash's leg there as he was running away. So, I, I love little bits like that, but the thing that makes me love it even more is that it wasn't, like, animated to where they're making you move into that scene you know how in some shows they tend to kind of put a little few seconds to show the pokemon go and then cling on to the trainer in the back or something here it's more like it was done in the background it wasn't meant to be the main focus it was something right. that's done in like a show not tell kind of uh direction and that's right. what made me appreciate it a lot more it's the little things that count that really make it so fun to watch with this episode i had to watch this episode three times just to catch all the things that I could have missed out on. And there's so much in this episode that you could miss out on just from watching it only once. I guarantee yeah. you, you go back again, you're going to see something else you will like for sure. But that's my take on it though. Like, what about you guys in particular? What, what do you have to say about this episode overall that really kind of caught your attention? The Galar, the Galar Wild Battle remix, and the way Hayashi in, uh, faded out and in, in the instruments. The music in this episode, yeah, I have to say, is also pretty great too. Yeah, and unfortunately, we we're not going to hear it. Um, actually, the funny thing about it is that <laughs> in John's server, somebody actually ripped out from like the the whole TV five point one Teletoon thing. And they ripped out the Galar Wild Battle theme. Apparently, I haven't heard it yet though, so I don't know how good it okay. is. Uh, but it is okay. on the on John's All Discord. All right, so, there. so hopefully, so not mean. I mean, what I'm talking about is well, it's saying the dub. So it's like, oh well, no, it, that that's that a gamble in itself, buddy. <laughs> that is gonna be a gamble. I know it's yeah. not gonna be. Yeah, it was not. Yeah, it's gonna be a gamble. It wasn't by um, Filippo. It was by Shirt. Uh, our yeah. buddy Shirt on Discord. Yes. Uh, make sure your volume is on low when you listen to it. Oh God, is it that bad? <laughs> or is it that loud? I should say. 
Uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. Okay, see, see, there's the scene right there that I'm talking about. The the Beagle right there putting its arm around the Grimer right there while the Grimer's trying to eat. I love okay. shit like that. It, it didn't put it as, like, the main focus. That was the main thing that it, it was like a sideline thing that they had in the background that if you caught it, you'll appreciate it a lot more. And that's how I can summarize this episode best. It's something you need to view more than once. And it, thankfully, oh, yeah, it's an sure. episode that's good to where you won't mind watching it more than once. Mm. Also, I like the fact that uh, Satoshi freaking fell asleep when he was supposed to. to yeah, uh, he was supposed to uh, do a night shift. Also, I like the way I like the way the day to night transitions happened. Uh, you see the top of the observatory. I, I wished, I, I legitimately wish they had like that click noise that it would just, when it switches, it would be like, and just like that, you know, but like, I, I still love the, the way they animated it from day to night, as you stated, it is really effective for uh, what they're trying to portray here with this episode, how, you know, things happen in the day, things happen in the night, you need to pay attention here and there. Uh, but you talking about the whole night sequence scene at uh, TSS, my favorite scene had to be Pikachu responding to Ash <laughs> in that moment where Ash was still sleeping, but he was like, Pikachu, he's Thunderbolt. And then you just hear Pika and then just for, like for a brief second, it was there pure silence <laughs> and then just all electrocutes. <laughs> There we go. There's the fucking smiles. Looks like something shit out of like Mr. Men, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I really do. This episode was yeah. fun. You know, I, I, I have so much I would love to say, but I feel like I'm gonna be a broken record at this point with some of the things I want to bring up. And oh, yeah. you know, oh yeah, and, and then of course, and then of course, the whole climax was um, Golurk uh, somehow losing the bolt that that holds on the the plate that holds its chest, and it goes ape shit. And the cascoon is trying to evolve, and it can't. You have all this freaking, you know, all the the river overflowing and shit. I love that. Yeah. That whole sequence. Uh, one cool thing that Sakuragi pointed out about this episode, I love that he states that the Pokemon have kind of made their own groups in the forest itself. Yeah. Like, there's the normal type group, there's the bug type group, there are the lone wolves, I guess you could say, like with Sandile yeah. and Mistrevious. You know, everybody has, like, their own pack in that area. And I really like that. I think that's so cool that every kind of Pokemon has their own individual crew that they could hang around with. And then it would eventually lead to a point where they could clash with each other if they don't agree or, you know, maybe they disagree with certain things that could be happening within the park. It, it's stuff mm. like that. I, I appreciate it because it expands upon something that we rarely get to see much of. I also have to say, it makes me happy to see Ash also involved with this too. Yes, it is Go's Pokemon, but I also like that Ash is also taking time out of his way to also help Go take care of the Pokemon in the lab. Even though mm -hmm. Ash completely ignored it in the first in the first part of this episode when he was busy training Riolu with Vacuum Wave and Mr. Mime over there in the background just gives two shits about that attack. <laughs> Just, he was on the floor just taking a, sn a snooze while that barrier was in front of his face, man. Like, I, mm -hmm. I love bits like that. And then, of course, when uh, Ash received the phone call, be like, incoming phone call from Go. And Go screams out, you know, like, Ash, what the hell are you doing? Come back here. You're supposed to help feed the Pokemon. And Ash be like, oh, shit, I forgot. So, things like that. I, I love this because this is exactly what I love to see from a Pokemon show. This is this is the way you handle these kind of things. If you're not going to have a story-driven episode and would like to approach things on a filler kind of side, this is the approach you do it. And to me, mm -hmm. I want more of this. I would love to see more of this, but I don't want to see them immediately back-to-back. -back. Maybe like in 10, 20 episodes from now, we could see another one. But the main difference is that Go has caught more Pokemon by that time, so we could see more unique group mix-ups from Go's Pokemon here that could potentially right. make it for another intriguing storytelling, you know? Maybe, maybe training. Exactly, that would be fun. And uh, another bit too, Dragonite to me surprised me in this episode. Uh, mm. I was not expecting Dragonite to tell Ash and Go to kind of just leave the Pokemon to be by themselves because mm -hmm. the Pokemon in the park have to take care of things on their own and not really the trainers have to take care of them, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was something I appreciated from Dragonite. I didn't think it had that kind of uh, 
point of view with the with that, but made me appreciate Dragon Knight just a little bit more, man. Mm-hmm. So yeah, overall, this episode to me, it was a great episode to come back on. I, I just enjoyed it from beginning to end. It, it had nothing but just give me pure smiles all over. I'm a little bummed out. The opening still didn't get updated yet, though, despite being 20-something episodes already in. Uh, but I'm Can't assuming they're... Episode. Yeah, I'm assuming they're holding out for maybe a new opening song or something. I'm curious yeah. to see what they're going to be doing. But for what it is right now, that's just a little nitpick of mine anyway. So that's all I got to say on this. Uh, Riolu, love that Pokemon. I'm so glad Ash finally caught one. It being treated, it, it being treated like a baby Pokemon is fantastic, you know. So that I appreciate. I, I would think I would think they're not going to change the opening until Go has Cinderace. Really? No. Oh, that what? would explain why they haven't uh, highlighted the. Uh... That's that's a long time. Is well, it? then again, though, not really, because if you look at if you look at the first openings for each series, you know, Advanced Adventure was sixty nine episodes. Freaking Volt was like what 40, 45. Yeah, yeah but that was even then with the change of V Volt. Stages at that point, I think when the first opening happened, Ash had mainly what I call the Kalos Amigos, which is Pikachu, Froki, and Fletchling. We didn't get any major evolutions until Mega of a Mega Volt, which was Fletchling to Fletchender, and then Halucha's capture, and then Halucha's capture, and then in Get a Bond Bond, we got like Froki to Frogadier. And then we got Fletchender was still Fletchender at that point. It was Gumi that was changed. Yeah, Gumi was the one that went through the three changes, but that's because he went through his little Oasis arc. And then after that, yeah, and like Fennekin was a Fennekin most of that time, and then it didn't turn into Brakeson until like the end of Get a Bond Bond. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to go that far. Cinder, I don't think we're going to get Cinderace for a bit. I'm still surprised it evolved relatively early, though. I mean, it's a starter, though. Yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen. I'm curious to see what they plan to do. Uh, Reboot has begun to be a Pokemon I'm appreciating more. I'm glad that yes. they're keeping its uh, development that it received last week and keeping it intact here. You mean la- last time. <laughs> uh, I'm saying, yeah, la- uh, <laughs> that is true, too. Last development time. Development that he did, development that, that Reboot received six weeks ago. Yeah, he, being stuck in that train for six weeks must have done a really good job for the poor lad. So, there you go. Um, there was something else I wanted to state in regards to that. I don't know if this is true, but... I have to listen to some past episodes, and maybe you guys might have caught this too in the chat. Um, usually in the intro sequences that they have highlighting Leon and then Mew, did Reboot ever make its little cry noise in the beginning of those episodes? Or was no. it always no. silent? In this no. episode, though, it did. Yes. So, I don't know if it was uh, something that... Was in previous episodes, but I just want to make sure. It wasn't. Okay, so it that's wasn't. good. So that that right there is a nice little uh, touch that I think some people might have uh, passed by on. But once again, I don't know for a hundred percent sure. I need to rewatch those past episodes to really uh, take a double listen on that. But yeah, I heard Reboot's little cry noise that it made at the sequence when Ash and Go would give the the handshake, you know, in the intro sequence. So yeah, that, that's all I gotta say on that. Um, Next, uh, also, I guess also, we- also, also, it actually has its eyes open. Yeah. Oh, right. That too, actually. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there were there are a couple like little changes that once again not the main focus, but they are sprinkled in the background. You just got to take a closer look at it. So there you go on that. Now, I guess the last thing we should probably talk about is the preview. Yes. No, that's an episode. Wait, hold on, Richie Alpha. Did you, uh, Evie? Did you guys have anything no. to say? Because like KG, I got, sort of, I got absolutely nothing. <laughs> KG, I guess KG really could. I guess you really liked this episode because you took like ninety percent of the. No, no. See, you you have to understand. I'm a fan of like these kind of episodes. It's like a KG episode. Th- this to me was like the kind of sun and moon kind of episode approach, you know. Yeah. So I like that kind of direction, and so. As you know, uh, everybody has their own unique taste as to how they like a particular episode. Some might like battle-heavy episodes, like you, Tyrone. Like you were also yeah. very heavy talking on the uh, on the fight when it happened in Lieutenant Surge Gym. You know, yeah. 
yeah. for me, the, these are the kind of episodes I just appreciate a lot because I always love dissecting all the little details that you barely get to see in the background and kind of bring well, it up front for those who didn't I, check it, you know? I'm still going to put my input in on the episode because I didn't, like, I didn't hate the oh, episode. Thank you. All right, what's up, Richie? Nah, no, thank you. That's a, that's all I have for it. <laughs> you didn't have anything to say it's for decent, the episode. It's a nice episode if you're not looking for too much. Yeah, um, I mean, it's on. definitely a... I will, I will by, the way, by the way, we got a Dust Ox. All three of the costumes evolved in Dust Ox. Yeah, I was about to... That was what I was going to say. TSS took it. Well, I got nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, as for me, I don't have it. I don't really have anything else to comment on. Um, I didn't watch the episode first off, so... Yeah, which is... I know. I need. I I got some catching up to do, but we'll 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 see how the next few episodes so, um, deliver. Basically, to me, it's a. I call these Pikachu vacation episodes. I and the reason I say that's because I base it off of the Pikachu Ooh. vacation short, where you know those moments where the Pokemon take front and center, not so much the people. I, Ash and Go are there, and they do stuff. Go, unfortunately, this doesn't help him. <laughs> Because unfortunately, if Ash does anything, it's better than what Go would have done. <laughs> so, <he laughs> un so unfortunately, Go falls on the wayside. Damn. But I will say that this episode did do a good like. It like you guys already stated. You already you guys stated so much. Um, it does a good job of making the Pokemon have personality, and they're not just added numbers to Go's Pokedex. Um, I knew the split second the cast going were on screen because the camera literally zooms into them at the start of the episode. The episode's going to resolve with them basically evolving. Like, like them evolving is going to be the peacekeeper that keeps this stuff, like, that that's going to quail the fighting mostly. Because when the storm's over, you see the, the, the cast going evolving and the dust guy stops, and that technically prevents this episode from being, like, 100% filler. Um... And when that happens, you get this beautiful scene with them separating, like, the storm clouds. I'm like, I didn't know Dust Ox had the ability to do that. And it actually would have looked a lot better if they were beautified. But <laughs> I don't know. When we I already think had, of, but we already had that episode. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just saying when I think of storm clouds parting ways, I don't think moths. <laughs> I usually think, <laughs> I think beautiful butterflies. That is true, right. actually. But, um... Yeah, I like the little bits like that. I like the Riolu training with the Mr. Mime situation only because, uh, one, we get to see some on-screen training and stuff. Um, I also like the idea. I like the idea that the bug Pokemon basically formed a, a coup against the other Pokemon. And I really love the Miss Drevis and uh, Sandile situation where they're hyping up Sandile to look like the super powerful Pokemon to serve as a bodyguard for the rest of the Pokemon fighting. But when it uh, when Sandile comes front and center to fight, it, it pulls up uh, Mr. Satan and is really weak, and it can't it can't back up its um its bulk. Oh, Again, that that sequence when like it just went to white and all you saw yeah. was the light. <laughs> <He's got the laughs> fucking... he's, he's got no bark to his bite, so he literally just chickens out the minute it uh, it turns into an actual fight. And then Darmanitan's being cocky as hell, but then the bug Pokemon band together and beat him. Because, like, the I like that they tend to, uh, paid attention to the fact that the bug Pokemon, since they're all bug Pokemon, they have a relation with each other. The other Pokemon think it's a conspiracy. Like, oh, they took all the food. And I will say, typically... It's a it's a done formula a lot when Pokemon fight. Normally when Pokemon fight, it's one of two things happened. One, one Pokemon attacked another uh, unintentionally. Or two, one Pokemon took another Pokemon's food while their back was turned. And then the fight starts and it, it, it turns into a giant squabble. It's been happening since Gen 1. Um, but here, I think this was the best version of that particular conflict. I like how the water Pokemon form a little thing of their own to the minute they uh, emerge from the water. So we get this like three-way battle happening on the island. Meanwhile, we've got uh, Galurk, Farfetch, uh, Galurk-centric Farfetch and uh, Squavit. And they're like the peacekeepers, even though Squavit's the one behind everything. I, like <laughs> I love that, too. I think I, Squavit doesn't even know about what's happening. 
like I think yeah, Squavit is doing everything unknowing that it's causing conflict. Like to Squavit, they have more than enough food to feed everybody, plus the, for it to hoard. So when they find it out at the end, it's a nice twist because even I was thinking, well, wow, are they not going to solve that whole Pokemon we're fighting situation over lack of food? And then we see Ash and Go hanging out. It turns out Squavit's been hiding this food the whole time. So he's been the culprit. Like he was the 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 one responsible. And poor poor Gengar. That means Gengar was accused of something it had no business doing. Thankfully, Ash gets his comeuppance. But um, yeah, it, it's just good to see little stuff like that. It's a nice ep- like a, like you guys already said. It's a nice episode, I guess, to break up the pace. Um, yeah, it's a nice only- episode to also come back on too. And I yeah, quoted, and and I was, and I freaking said it last week. You know, the freaking, you know, don't sleep on episodes that don't look that appealing. Yeah. Yeah, because this episode wound up being one of my top five favorite episodes from PM twenty nineteen, man. It's not on my top five. So it, 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 but it is a nice. It, it, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Like, I, I, well, when I say top five, I literally mean fifth place. <laughs> oh, I was saying, to me, it's definitely just a nice episode. I don't know. Po- like, Pokemon episodes are really hard to convince me to like go, oh, these are great. Because if you have as many Pokemon as Go have all coming in at once, and they're fighting over food, it, it turns to me like it's a, yeah, I kind of expected this. They're fighting over food. Like, they've done this for me a lot. Piplup, unfortunately, Piplup, Chespin, and Oshawott are the big three when it comes to that joke. <laughs> Sadly. Yeah, they're, they're the ones that food, their food either was stolen or they stole some food, and they start the whole fight. So yeah, they are always responsible, and somehow they always get away with it, too, is the worst part. Right, so this episode is the precursor to them. I say this episode's the best version of their formula, but um, but it, it's definitely, like, one of those chill, very chill Pokemon episodes that can break up the monotony of, like, just so much plot or so much story-driven things. Um, I like the little moment where Reboot is still acting a little rebellious, but Ghost come to terms with it now, so he's smiling afterwards. It's a small moment, but it exists, and I think that's nice. Mm. Yeah, and I like how Sakuragi's kind of chill about it. It's almost like he knows. It's almost like he kind of knew that, that Squavit was doing all of this, and he just wanted to see how the Pokemon would react. Because he's not troubled by it at all. He's, he's, he's sort of chill. But then again, Sakuragi's been chill about a lot of stuff. Including having a Gengar in his fucking laboratory for so long. Mm. So, yeah. Not, not, nice chill episode. Nothing nothing too big. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. Still, I love that, that, that bird scene with them truly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect frame to end it on. Um, and I guess we could talk about the preview then? Yeah. Please do. All right, then. So the preview for next week's episode. Yeah, that's all I got to say. Team Rocket. Team Rocket again. Team Rocket doing Team Rocket stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, listen, yeah, next week. Rocket, are, are the Rockets not doing Rocket stuff and the real Rockets doing stuff? Yeah, no, I mean, there you go. That's when, the, I say, when, I say, when I say Team Rocket stuff, that can range anywhere from actually doing, like, uh, uh, schemes or just goofing around. Yeah. For starters, I like that Matori's back. That's something great. Matori was one of my favorite characters, especially in Sun and Moon. So to see her come back it's again also is that great. same dude from that Sun and Moon arc, if you remember. Yeah, the the crew. The the whole squad is, I believe, there. That yeah. tall beard. Uh, did he have a beard? I, did I, I don't know. But beard? anyways, it's the, same, it's the same exact dude. Yeah, uh, so th- they're back. The I did not see Alolan Meowth, though. So I'm a little bummed yeah, out by that. Like, what happened? Weird. Or maybe Alolan Meowth is taking a bit of a snooze cruise somewhere in the beach and we don't yeah, see it anywhere. Probably a lazy cat. It doesn't give a damn. Exactly. So it, it, it prefers doing things behind the scenes and not in the forefront. Maybe that's the whole shtick with that one. I don't know. But I hope to see the cat come back. So hopefully the cat will come back. Exactly. So um, there's that. Um, I feel this episode, if you really don't think too hard on it, You'll really enjoy it. The moment you decide to start bringing in 
ideas or theories as to characters from long ago making an appearance in this episode, I think you guys are going to be very disappointed. So keep your expectations low. You're really right. low. I'm talking about the lowest of the low. Unless you're talking about Sun and Moon characters, then you can be high up there. But for this, no. <laughs> not for not for Bitch or Boost City. I don't remember what their names were again. So. <laughs> Botch and Cassidy. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like like this. I feel Holy like Christ. it's gonna be it's gonna have its funny it's moments bad. here and there. But to me, this is just the, the second episode before the Karina episode. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. oh, you you're 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 that same person like I was back in X and Y. I was like, so the preview for next week's episode looks great, doesn't it? <laughs> Instead of the actual review. Yeah. Next episode. This, this is this is episode number two before the Karina episode. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, listen, man, that, that, that episode is going to be hype for well, sure. Boys. Yeah, if anything, we're hyped for the preview for the episode that comes after it. Team Rocket episodes will always deliver. We are not denying that. They will always do an amazing job. In Shit. fact, yeah, I, so I, I, again, I will say, don't judge the episode. Oh, no, I'm not judging it. I'm just saying I'm just I'm more just, hyped. I was talking to the other people uh, out there. That, you know, the, pro- the problem is, when, if, we go, if we go back to those filler in X and Y, the problem is the... The, the trailers don't really didn't really drum up anything and a lot of times more often than not it didn't it didn't add on to anything but at least with this one at least with these it actually came out better than what people expected also to some extent on the moon but we're not going to get into that now because we don't want to be here for three hours <laughs> yeah but. we want to we're going to see how the story unfolds next week you know, but for sure, I can easily say I am excited for what they have in store. It's going to be fun. You know, Team Rocket episodes. And also, I guess that's where we're going to see the Mr. Fat Giant Magikarp that Go catches. Yeah. Because that yes. preview was nuts with the Magikarp. I'm glad they're giving him another giant Pokemon. The Kiki Cook. Yeah, so, like, I'm curious how that, like, yeah, Go, I guess, is going to collect the Titan Pokemons, basically. Well, some of them. I mean, Magikarp, I think the joke is going to be that in the end of the day, it's still Magikarp. Unless they decide to evolve it, but I, I don't think they will. Nah. I think the whole joke is that it is a Magikarp that's just yeah. so freakishly huge. Yeah. Which makes me question how it's going to fit in the pond. You're just going to see a giant Magikarp amongst all the little regular sized, like, polywags wanna, and whatnot. I want to tell myself that Sakuragi's probably going to either A, have the Pokemon come out of their Pokeballs in, like, in like sections. Like, oh, okay, it's time for these Pokemon to go back to their balls, and it's time for these Pokemon to come out for fresh air. Or he's probably going to make an expansion to the pavilion. Yeah, some DLC content for the Pokemon, I guess. Or, like, yeah, just ex- mm. expand the laboratory and make it bigger. Hey, he's going to need it if Go's going to try to catch all 900 something Pokemon, so... Yeah. It's going to be a big journey, man. But I am for sure looking forward to that. Once again, Team Rocket episodes, always something fun to look forward to. It's just that when you have an episode that fans have been craving for for years. Oh, I just literally realized Metapod out. and Kakuna weren't in this episode either. No, they were. Oh, they were? Yeah. Metapod was, I know. Ah, oh, well, Kakuna wasn't. I don't recall seeing Kakuna, though. I don't see. I didn't remember seeing Cocoon. Cause yeah, Go caught all the evolutionary lines of the bugs. Yeah. Yeah, the egg. I feel like I think the only thing with the egg was just the egg was just the more noticeable one where all the other ones appeared. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah, I got nothing much more to say for the preview. I feel I think I got the message across for what I feel for what's gonna come from next week's episode. Uh, one little bit though, I did like that Jesse gave Ash his Pikachu back. I thought that was really weird, cause you know that she had to have like cried a little inside when she had to give the Pikachu back. Mm-hmm. Like that to me, I liked. I was like, damn, even Team Rocket had to have you know, kind of hold themselves back because they can't catch these Pokemon given that they are on break. I, I really am excited just to see how Giovanni's just going to straight up tell everybody, all right, boys, you're on vacation now. Get out of here or something, you know? Like, I really am curious about that part. Yeah. Uh, but aside Yeah, so from- are they actually going on vacation or is this just, oh, go on vacation while well, we do something in the back? <laughs> you know, yeah, no, maybe that could be the case. You never know. I think I, I think Jesse and James are actually following the order to go on vacation, but they see the other Team Rocket member isn't. The Team Rocket members aren't. 
So they're trying to stop them from doing it. Well, Giovanni show- gave them the order to go on vacation. So Maybe he's doing that to empty out the area because he has to pay his rent or something. And he doesn't want anybody else to be shown in that area. Like, Giovanni telling everybody to go on vacation to me seems like the silliest ass, like, plot point anyway. But that's what... That, that's one of the reasons I'm probably not paying this, this next episode much attention, because it's like... I don't know. This is the same Giovanni that talked to Mewtwo in the middle of a fucking burning island. Like, I don't know if vacation is the first thing he thinks about every day. Like, yeah, it's, it's a point. It's a point. Hmm. Yeah, that's all we're saying. It's only time will tell, I guess, as to how the episode is overall. So, with that being said, though, I'm pretty much done with this one. I really don't have much more to add on this uh, on this discussion. Yeah, we're, we pretty much have said all I can say about it, too. Yeah, so it feels great, though. I will be uh, honest here. It just feels great to finally come back into new content. I mean, from the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass trailer to the uh, to the latest episode of Pocket Monsters 2019, all the information we've gotten in between for Pokemon in general, for movies and whatnot, and then, of course, new content to look forward to within the week. You know, especially uh, things that don't relate to, to Nintendo or Pokemon. Like, for example, the Sony event is going to be happening uh, sometime later this week. I believe on the 11th. So, what time was that again? Was it 8 p.m. Eastern time? 1 p.m. Pacific. I, I would know because I am, you know, I'm going to do a little streaming party for that. Yeah. If I ever get a chance to, I might try streaming it too. What just time to... would that be on your time, KG? Uh, let me double four. check. Would it be, be well? If he said he said four. He said he said one Pacific, so it's four. No, nine Pacific. Oh, nine Pacific, so nine? twelve Eastern. Which one well, are we looking at? I won't be able to watch. Hold it. on, let me see. When is the Sony event happening? Uh, uh no, dude. It's literally one p.m. Pacific, so it's four. So it's four p.m. Eastern for you guys. And if it's four for you, that means it's three for me. Yeah, I'll still be at work. <laughs> I love how this thing says here: one p.m. PT, ten p.m. CEST. So. That's a, that's BST. I don't know. What yeah. No. So. No. Uh, wait. What? Yeah. That's that. No. That's wrong. Here we go. It C- says here: CEST is a Central European summer time. That's uh. So, that's like Germany, France, Hungary. It you know that shit. So what is the, bu- the bullshit? The bullshit time. British summertime is plus five, so that would be nine p.m. So yeah, it is nine p.m. Then for for EST, then isn't it? No. Hold no. on, no, because it says right here. Literally, I, I'm reading one of the articles. It says right here, uh, four Dude, p.m. PT, nine p.m. PET. <laughs> I'm, I'm just typing in. Yeah, it's I'm it's looking, happening sometime that. later. Let, let's just say that. All right, let, let's let's. Well, just I need get, to let, figure it out because well, I need to figure out whether I'll be at work or not. Yeah, I'm gonna call my boss and tell him I don't want to work that day for this event. That. <laughs> Uh, you guys talking about the PS5 event? Yeah. Yeah, I'm more than likely to be at work by the time. Thursday. Yeah, it is at 4 p.m. EST, 1 p.m. PST then. Okay, perfect. Just before, oh, okay, just before so I go to work. How does that translate to you? That means when when it will it be there on UNTSS's time? 4 p.m. 4 p.m.? So it's 3 p.m. for me. Yeah, I'll be at work because I got to work till 5 p.m., which would be 6 p.m. your time. Yeah. Why did they not save it for nighttime, man? That would have been better. Yeah, I don't know why the hell they do that. They know people go to work. And the other, the other, the other issue is that that, that this shit is gonna air at like five a.m. Japan time. Ugh. Yeah. So it helps nobody really, except for those who don't work, I guess. Yeah. yeah. The only way I'm gonna. Well, 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 I mean, I mean, in I Europe, in Europe, it'll be in Europe, it'll be fine because nine ten p.m. It's yeah, fine. and that's already after work. It's normally done. Well, for the average, you you know, person. Yeah. Call out sick. No, I'm already calling out sick for another day, so I can't do it for this. Oh, thing. Lord. Yeah, you're calling out for the DLC. <laughs> exactly. No, no, it's a uh, graduation stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Based yeah, on I that should that should be around it. For, uh, let me think. I don't think I'm gonna be doing anything Thursday. We'll see what happens. Yeah, well, we'll figure it out soon enough. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, it's a good event. Will they do a good job for Sony fans? Or will they show off games that are also going to be coming out on the Xbox One and PC? We don't know. But uh, we shall find out on the 11th. So let's look forward to some good stuff until then. Um, 
I want to say sometime maybe. No, let me see. On Wednesday, I know I'm going to be streaming though. Uh, you know the the Pokemon Emerald stuff. Um, I do have questions I want to ask the chat though for a bit before we wrap things up. Uh, I do want to try to eventually make something special for Fridays for streams. You know, because uh, obviously all of us here were also talking in the background regarding like smaller podcast related content. You know, hopefully uh, I'll be asking that question on Twitter as to like what you guys would like to see for Friday's kind of content. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys on Twitter will be able to uh, respond to us there as to what you guys would like to see for Fridays. I know Wednesdays are going to be like the RPGs stuff with like Pokemon and whatnot, but I like to have something for Friday. So if you guys would respond to me on the question I'll put up on Twitter later tonight, uh, that will be wonderful. So once again, guys, though, thank you guys so much for being with us here tonight. We had so much fun to finally discuss new content for the anime series again. And uh, hopefully you guys will be joining us again next week for more shenanigans. So, until that day comes, though, once again, make sure to follow everybody here that's on the call for tonight. Alpha Evie, Richie, Tyrone, TSS, all of those things should be in the friend segment down below. So, make sure to go check that out and uh, stay tuned for more silly shenanigans. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us here on Twitch and also to subscribe here as well if you have Twitch Prime, all that goody stuff to go and help and support the channel out. It'll always, uh, it'll always be a wonderful blessing for all of us. So... Until every, until next time, everybody, my name is KG Prestige. Thank you guys so much for being with us here, and we'll talk with all of you guys later in whatever video we make. Take care, everybody, and as always, have yourself an awesome day. Eight more episodes of Farty Synths coming out on Friday. What? Farty. Journeys. Oh, Lord. <laughs>